Hey everyone, so I'm back, and in this video, then we're going to talk about, uh, we're still in chapter 2, and we're going to deal with unknown matrix entries, and this is a very common topic that comes up where you just have a matrix, there's some unknown in it, and then you need to find the unknown for this matrix to satisfy certain properties, uh, because we're in chapter 2, it's going to be this rank here, so we see that what value of x does, uh, does x need to be such that rank of this matrix is 3, when we go to chapter 4, It'll be like, what value does X need to be to satisfy that the column space, the dimension of the column space spans, uh, the dimension of column space is two or something like that. And so you'll deal with a little more with terminology. But for right now, let's just do rank. And so how do we do this problem? Well, like always, we're just going to row reduce. So we get this matrix and we're going to start row reducing. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take uh, row two. So we want to zero out these guys. And so I'm going to take row two, and then I'm going to subtract out three times row one. And uh, the edge calibration is not very good. Okay. And then we're going to take row one, I'm going to subtract out uh, row three, I'm going to subtract out row one, and then I'm going to take row four, I'm going to subtract out row one as well. And so we get one, two, negative one, one, three. Okay. And then this becomes zero, uh, negative six, three, negative four, x minus nine. Zero, oh, whoops, Ugh. zero, negative three, three, negative two, negative two, and zero, negative three, zero, negative two, one. Okay, and so, okay, so now we've zeroed out everything under the leading one in the first column, and what do we want to do now? Well, let's zero out then this guy and this guy right here, and that way. Uh, we can work our way towards something that looks like a uh, row echelon form. And, okay, so 1, 2, negative 1, 1, 3, 0, negative 6, 3, negative 4, x minus 9. So how am I going to zero out these guys? Well, I'll take this row times 2, and I'll subtract out row 2. And then I'll take the third row, uh, or the last row, row 4, I'll multiply by 2, and then I'll subtract out row 2 to get zeros, and so here we get zero, zero, uh, three times two minus three is three, and then you get zero, and then here you get negative four minus x minus nine, but that becomes a positive five, so this is like five minus x, and then you get zero, zero, negative three, uh, you get a zero here, and you get 11 minus x, okay? And then finally, what I'm gonna do then is I wanna zero out this, negative uh, this guy right here and so simply I'm just going to take row 4 I'm going to add it to row 3 um, and so we get then 1 2 negative 1 1 3 0 negative 6 3 negative 4 x minus 9 0 0 3 0 5 minus x and then 0 0 0 0 you add 5 minus x to 11 minus x and you get 16 minus 2x alright and then this is going to be our matrix then in almost REF. Remember, we don't have to reduce it to row echelon form. All we have to do is expose where the pivots are. So then we have a pivot here. We have a pivot here. We have a pivot here. And then we have this here. right? And so for rank is equal to 3, that means we want 3 pivots. Which means then that we want this guy, the 16 minus 2x, is equal to 0. right? So for rank to equal 3, we need... Uh, 16 minus 2x is equal to 0. And so we see that x then is equal to 8. And we have our answer. Okay? And this is cool and all, but is there a quicker way to do this problem? And there is, right? And the quick way, there's, there's always a shortcut to these problems. Always. And uh, what's the shortcut? Well, what does rank three mean? Rank three means then that we have three linearly independent rows or columns, right, in our matrix. And the shortcut to this problem then was to realize that, wait, hold on, if I took this row and I add it to this row and I add it to this row, well, if row two was equal to row one plus row three plus row four, then the rank would be 3, right? Because I would have row 1 would be linearly independent, row 3 would be linearly independent, row 4 would be linearly independent, but row 2 would be the sum 
or it would be a linear combination of these three rows, and therefore uh, the rank would be three. And so that's the shortcut we want to look at. And why why did I why in the world would I even think about this? Well, it's because of this. Uh, you have a one here, you have a one here, you have a one here, and you have a three here. All right, so one plus one plus one is three. Okay, that works. Well, two minus one minus one is zero. Oh, and if we continue on, negative one plus two minus one, that's well, negative two minus two. Well, that's zero. And you get the idea, like, if you continue, one minus one minus one is negative one. And so all we then had to do to find x was then we had to do, oh, it was three plus one plus four. Well, three plus one plus four is equal to eight. And so x is equal to eight would have been the really sh quick way to do this problem. And so there's nothing wrong with row reducing this. But just to give you guys a heads up, if you ever see these kinds of, like, unknown values of x's uh, either for like column space or in this case rank because we're in chapter two look to see if there's some shortcut that deals with adding rows and that might save you a lot of time and a lot of algebra as well